The foundation to statistics and statistical analysis is truly found in probability. So today we're going to take a look at calculating the probability that a simple event will occur. Probability is simply a measurement between 0 and 1 that describes the likelihood an event will occur. We use 0 to represent no chance and 1 to represent an event that is certain to occur and decimals in between that to show various levels of probability. For example, 0.5 would be equally likely and unlikely to occur. The way we calculate a probability is we can divide the frequency of an event that we prefer by the number of possible events. Let's take a look at an example. Here, the Right to Health Lobby collected a sample of 200 laboratory results, of which 80 were erroneous. So what is the probability any one lab report will be an error? What we'll do is we will divide the frequency by the number possible. The frequency of the errors was 80. Divide by the number possible of 200 lab results. And when we divide, we end up with 0.40. So the probability of an erroneous lab report is approximately 40%. We have what's called the law of large number that works with probability. First, we need to understand two different types of probability. The first type is theoretical probability. It's based on what's expected to happen. We expect a coin to land heads about 50 out of 100 times. So we would expect, theoretically, the probability of a heads to be 50 out of 100 or 0.5. Now, the empirical probability would be the observed successes out of a total number of trials. Here, we'd actually flip the coin 100 times and record how many heads. Maybe I get 53, so we'd say our empirical probability of this sample was 53 out of 100, or 0.53. Notice the empirical probability is close to the theoretical, and that's the idea behind the law of large numbers. The idea is, as the sample size increases, the empirical probability gets closer and closer to the theoretical probability. So if I flip the coin 1,000 times, we'd expect our decimal to get even closer to 0.5. That's the law of large numbers. A few notes as we work with probability. First, the sum of all the probabilities of all the events must always equal 1, because something is guaranteed to occur. We might not know what option, but all together they should add to 1. We also have what's called the complement of an event. That's the event that what we're talking about does not occur. So for example, if the event is it rained today, the complement would be it did not rain today. It's the opposite group. Because the sum of the probabilities of all events must be 1, the probability of our event plus the probability of its complement, notice we notate the complement with a superscript of C, the two probabilities together have to equal 1. Or what we do more often to calculate the complement is we do 1 minus the probability of a given event. So for example, if the probability of a defective part is 0 0.05, the complement would be we do not have a defective part. And the way we calculate that probability is we'll take 1 minus the probability. 1 minus 0 0.05 is 0.95. So the complement, not a defective part, has a probability of 0.95. Hope this video introducing probability has been helpful to you as you begin working with probabilities as we calculate the probability that a simple event will occur.